Hi, I'm Colin from Time Valley Motorhomes. Today I'll be doing the handover on the Water Trail Arapahoe 2008. So, on the driver's side of the vehicle, you've got your hookup point. So, to hook the vehicle up, get your hookup lead, lift the flap, lift the collar, and slide on. And then, to unhook, there is a small blue lever on the left hand side that you've got to push down to unhook the vehicle. And then open the lockers underneath. We've got the south core key, which is the chrome key. Put this in to here, turn it, and this will release the door. And in there is where you'll find both your leisure batteries. So you've got your two 12, 12 volt leisure batteries and your, your fuse for your batteries. Coming further down, again, you've got another one just. Underneath storage compartment. And this is a drawer. So slides out. And in there is your wet locker. So there you've got your exterior shower hose which clips in like so. Make sure the pump's on and you can turn it from on to off. And there you go, there's a the trigger. So that'll give you hot water if you've had your hot water on, if not cold water. This is a good place to keep your leveling ramps and hookup lead as well. Underneath you do have your waste water. So this is any water that has went down or anything that has went down a plug hole. So you turn it, turn the lever back and normally you drive over a grid on the way out of a campsite and deposit your waste water. In the winter it's very important that you leave no water in the vehicle and this is one of the, the taps you'd have to open. The toilet behind here, this is a toilet cassette so this opens with one of the round headed keys. So it goes into there and it will lock and unlock your cassette door. Push the both buttons in. And then you've got a small yellow lever. If you just lift that up and slide the cassette out, the cassette will only come out if the blade is closed on the bottom of the bowl of the toilet. And to empty, you take the cap off, press the yellow button, go to your waste disposal point, which is normally behind or beside your toilet block, empty it out. Once you've emptied it out, put some water in, give it a rinse, empty again. And if you're using the liquid form of chemical, a cap full straight into here, it's ready to go back into the vehicle. If you're using the sachets or the tablets, which is the new form, you put a pint of water back into the cassette, push it back into the vehicle, and drop a, a tablet straight down the toilet, and that will degrade into the liquid. Further back, you do have your under storage of your rear lounge, your garage area, so this will open with one of these keys as well, the round headed keys. So to open these locks, to lock them, you'd push them in and turn the key the opposite way and then turn it, the, the catch will pop out and then what you need to do is turn them to release the door. And in here you do have your leveling ramps, some spare waste hose, so this is waste hose which will go on to your waste point there. So if you can't get as close to the grid or the hole in the ground, you can clip this onto there and deposit your waste off in a, with a longer tube. And you've got your storage under there as well. Coming to the back of the vehicle, so this is fitted with a reversing camera up here. You've got your high level brake light. You've got your ladder, so your ladder will open with the, the smaller key, so you put that in here. Turn. Make sure the lock pops out, the barrel, and then you do have your ladder to gain access to your roof. And you've got your bike rack on here as well. If that folds down, you can fit three bikes on here. So this is, so you put your wheels through here, 
wheels on the tracks, these three are the spokes to tie your wheels down to the rail, and then these three are the crossbars to tie the bikes together and on securely to the bike. You also have storage underneath. So you've got another compartment which opens with this the south core key by the number plate there. That's been blanked up. And this is just access to your wires. So it's you don't really need to know about this. This is more for technicians. This is access for your wiring. Spare wheel lives under here as well, so this is where your spare wheel lives. So if you ever need to change the wheel on the vehicle, it opens with a round headed key as well, like the toilet door. Turn that big nut off and lift this fiberglass cover off, and there's a full size spare wheel behind there. Also, if we just go back onto the driver's side briefly. This is where your fresh water drain off is. So your waste is at the front. This is your fresh water drain off. So this is on a chain. If you just push the tap through the chain, it'll drop the tap and then you can open that and that's just fresh water. So this is another drain you'd want to drain off in the winter or if you've taken on any contaminated water or if you're leaving the vehicle for any length of time, you'll always want to drain the vehicle down to make the water not stagnant. But especially in the winter as water can freeze, in and the vehicle or outside the vehicle and they are just plastic tap plastic tanks and pipes you do have corner steadies on the back as well so these are corner steadies so you'll need to get your winding handle which i'll just grab now and i'll show you how to operate your winding handle your steadies so this is the steady handle there and what you do is, exactly like the caravan, you put onto the back and you wind the leg down. This is only if you think the vehicle is unstable, you can put the legs down to give it a bit more stability. But as this is a tag axle, it's pretty stable as it's got the rear tag axle, so the six, six wheels in total, so it's quite steady anyway. Moving further down the vehicle, so this is your fresh water intake, this is where you put your hose pipe. So go and buy a hose pipe. And this opens with a round headed key as well and put the hose pipe in here. So normally it's just a brass tap on those sides so you'll need a hose pipe and a hose lock. Put your hose pipe in here and basically fill it until it overflows or until you're happy there's enough water on board. There is an indicator on the control panel on how much water is in the main tank. And this is your fresh water. Tend to travel with a maximum of 20 litres if you go into a site. This keeps, the this keeps the weight down and improves the consumption of the engine on diesel. But if you are going while camping, you will have to take a, a full tank of water. The other way of filling, if you can't get a hose pipe to the vehicle, is bringing water to the vehicle in a aqua roll or um, bucket. And you'd connect, you'd put this end into there with the hose. You connect this two prongs onto here, and you drop the submersible pump into the bucket of water or the aqua roll, and this would suck the water out into the main tank. You will have to put tank fill on on the main control panel and don't put it on or don't have it on if there is no water in the bucket as you'll burn the motor out in this pool. Going further down this is your external gas point so if you want to power a Kadak or an external barbecue of the bottles on board you will need a bullfinch connector some gas piping and a jubilee clip to connect the bullfinch to the hose and the hose to 
the barbecue or kayak. And this will power off the main bottles to see if you're carrying an extra bottle. This cover here is for when heating the, the water on gas. So if you're heating the water on electric, it can stay on, but if you're heating the water on gas, this cover must come off. So this is your boiler flue. So what you need to do is you need to put some pressure on the top, put your finger in the middle and peel it off. Leave this in the passenger door and then when you're ready to travel, just clip it back on. But when you're heating the water on gas, this must come off. So if you're using the gas for the water, the cover must be off. Otherwise it will feel and indicate red on the main control panel. You've got your two vents for your fridge, your awning light, your awning, which I'll show you in a second. We've got some more storage here, which opens with the South Core key. And under here is just some more storage, which goes through the van. And in here is your LPG, so it's your gas locker, and to open this door, there is a lever just behind the, the passenger seat. You'd lift this up, this will lift the door, and then you can shut the door up there. <laughs> and then you've got your two gas bottles. So, you turn on at the top of the bottle, and always turn it off when you're travelling, as if you are involved in an accident, it's more safe to have the bottle off. And then if you should you ever need to change the bottle so the pigtail onto the next bottle it's a simple left hand thread to tighten so it's opposite threads with it being gas so it's left to tighten right to loosen and you just basically take it onto this bottle and tighten it back up you don't need a spanner it's just hand tighten and then turn on and off at the top of the bottle and operate your awning, so you get your awning winding handle which is in your garage area, put in the front here, and you want to wind the awning out until you can reach inside of the canopy where the two legs are located. So about there. And then there's two legs on the inside of the canopy, so you push them the wrong they're on a spring, which is sprung. Stand it up. You can adjust the height of your awning, and then this little plastic clip, push it up. This keeps the height that you've set it at. Get the legs out as soon as possible, as this bears the weight of the awning. And then, you can walk it out the rest of the way. There is a sea rail here, so if you wanted to drive away awning, the driveway kit fits on here. But always don't use the awning if the wind is in speeds of if excessive of 50 mile an hour. And if you go out or go to bed, always bring the awning in as the awning can cause damage to your vehicle and other people's vehicle if the wind should pick up when you're not in or during the night. So now at the front of your cab on the passenger door you do have your diesel. So this is where you fill with diesel. Open to the main ignition key, turn it and the cap will come off and you'll be able to fill with fuel, which is diesel. Inside on the slam panel of the passenger door, you've got your tyre pressures, which are five and a half bar all round, which is 79.5 psi. Underneath your seat is where you'll find your tool kit. So this has got everything in to change that wheel. So a jack and a brace, a tow knife, and a screwdriver. And underneath the floor, with it being fit, is where your engine battery lives. But you do have your bonnet release on the side of the passenger dashboard. And then your second you catch is just in the middle. And you've got your weight plate here, so with it being part of the Frontier range back in 2008, it was on an Alco chassis. So it's five ton. If you tow anything, you can tow an extra ton behind you. 
and you've got your front, your middle, and your tag axle weight there. Got your paint code, so should you ever need paint to respray the vehicle or touch any chips, this is your code, so it's 249. You've got your coolant, your brake fl fluid, your power steering fluid, and the main one you're gonna need, is, which is in the corner, is your screw wash. You do have your oil filler here, and your dipstick there for checking your levels, and should you ever need to jump start the vehicle, your earth goes onto here, so this is your earth, and then your positive is just located underneath this flap, and this is where your red jump lead would go for giving or receiving a jump start. So above the door, once you're in the vehicle, this is your auto trail control panel. So to turn on the power, you put the on button here. This will either give you 240 volt if you're hooked up, or 12 volt off your two leisure batteries if you're not. Next week you have your pump. You've got to have the pump on to use all the taps, toilet, shower and exterior shower on the vehicle. And you've got aux. Aux is the awning light outside the vehicle. And then this can just transfer the power, but I wouldn't advise I wouldn't advise using this to transfer the power as this will switch it on to the engine battery and there's more chance of flattening the engine battery and then not getting the engine started. And then here you can go through the control panel. So you've got your leisure battery reading, you've got your panel information, your leisure battery reading, your vehicle battery reading, your main supply is on so we are hooked up at the moment, you've got your leisure battery is a lead acid battery, you've got your fresh water reading which is 100%, you've got your waste which is zero because we've just opened it, you've got your external temperature, your battery current co coming in amps what we're using at the moment the pump select the external external fill so you've got to have this on to use the pump outside so your ex so internal or external there and then you would put on the pump beneath start in one minute and then you can set the clocks and the alarm, so you can set an alarm, so should you have a ferry or anything to catch, the control panel will beep until you wake up and manually turn it off. And then next to it you do have your Truma Ultra Heat on 230 volts, so this is how to heat the van when hooked up. So off on the little O, up to 2000 is 2 kilowatts of heating, and then you've got 1 to 9, 9 is about 30 degrees, and 5 is about 15, so this is your thermostat, or if you want on smaller sites abroad or CL sites, you can go to 500 watt, which is half a kilowatt, or 1000, which is 1 kilowatt, but in more sites you'd use 2. You've got your lights here for in your lounge at the front, and then you've got your ultra store on gas, so this is where the cover must come off of heating your water. And you just turn down to the gas flame and you've got 70 degrees for doing your dishes and 50 degrees which would you'd normally use for showering or you can have it 30, 40 or 60. But that's up to you. Right. So to operate your Fedford fridge, you've got an on-off button here. So you turn it on and then this is an automatic energy selection fridge. So it's on auto there. And you can tell when it says auto, it's going to find the best source it can. So it's found that we're hooked up. So if I was to take the hook up out now and the gas was to be open, it would switch over to gas. If I was to start the engine, it would go to the battery, which is a feed from the alternator to keep the temperature the same as it was when departing. So the idea with the battery is that if you're lucky enough to keep this at home or you've got a storage yard with hook up, put it on hook up the night before or two days before. Put your shop in, allow it to get lovely and cool, and then when you start the engine and it's on automatic, it'll switch over to the battery, and it should keep the sh the fr the shop in nice and fresh, no matter how long you travel. But the automatic feature is designed to wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas once you've had the engine on. This is because if you want to um, pull into a service station and start filling with fuel. The last thing you want to do is for the 
this fridge to start igniting on gas. So you can manually turn it over by pressing here. So if you are wanting to go on to gas and you don't want to wait the 20 minutes, you can just put it on to manual gas, which is the flame. Or you can put it on to hook up manually, or you can put it on to, to battery manually but as it, it brings up it starts flashing it brings up a cord 10 and a spanner this is because the engine is not running so it'll not work but the best bet is just to leave it on automatic you then have your fridge temperature here so five bars being the coolest you've got your fridge and your freezer and then you've got this little toggle here which you can pull out so when you finish using the van for any length of time, if you do take any remaining shopping out of here, clean it out. The last thing you want to do is shut the door as it will form an airtight barrier and trap the air in which will become smelly. So pull these little toggles out from underneath, put them into here and this will allow air ventilation in and out of the fridge and the freezer. Above the fridge you do have your microwave which is just a 700 watt household microwave so you must be hooked up for this to work like so now inside your wardrobe you have two few spurs so you've got your ultra heat so this is for heating the water on 240 so you've got to have this switch on to then operate the dial above the door you've got the ultra store on so this is heating your water on electric and you've got your air con which is here which i'll then go through in a moment you've also got your hoover which the last customer has left and that just docks your hoover there so this is how to operate your truma fire so this is how to heat the van on gas so if you're a wild camping or if it was just that cold you can have the electric and gas on together so you push down and this has got an automatic igniter on it and if you look through that pilot hole there you'll see the gas flame in the orange so that's lit on gas so you've got one to ten here which ten is about 30 degrees and then you've got the fan here, so if you're wild camping you wouldn't use the fan so you'd have it on the O which is in the middle here. And then you've got your fan speed at the back, 1 to 5. You can have it on the wave which is manual, so this will auto, this will continue to give the heat until you manually turn it down. Or you can have it on A which is automatic, and once the van hits the temperature it is required to be at. The, f the f fire will kick out and the thermostat will pick up that the, the van has reached the temperature. Once it picks up, it's dropped, it'll kick back in. And one to five, but if you are well camping, you just have it convecting out the front as you wouldn't want to waste your 12 volt battery on a fan to heat the vehicle, which it'll end up doing anyway. But just do be careful that you don't catch yourself on, when you're on the front of the fire when it's convecting out the front, because it can get very warm. To operate your MaxView satellite system, this is your sat box here in the cupboard above the drawers and the lounge at the back. So you turn the power on, you then press the red button here, which is to put your dish up so, until that starts flashing as well, like so. The dish is going up and then these will all flash until it fl starts flashing on 2, which is going to pick up Astro 2, which you want in this country, France, and the and the top of Spain. So this will flash until it goes to a solid light, and that's when you know your satellite has picked up Astro 2. And you'll hear the dish on the roof rotating until it picks up Astro 2 in the sky. And there you go, satellite has locked on the Astro 2 as it's a solid light and that's solid as well. So this is underneath your passenger side rear lounge bench seat. And this tap here is your winter boiler drain. 
So when winterizing, you want to get all the water out of the vehicle. So you want to open the waste, the fresh, and the boiler. And to open the drain tap, you would just lift it up like so, and you'll hear the water drain directly out underneath the chassis. You want to leave this up during winterizing, and then when you're ready to use the van again, put the tap down like so, fill the van with water, make sure your taps outside are closed, fill the van with water, shut all your taps inside the van, so always leave your taps open when you're winterizing in the middle position of the mixer to stop any water from building up and take your shower head off so you shut all your taps put your pump on go to your cold side of your tap first you'll automatically get cold water go to the hot side it'll cough it will splutter make all sorts of noises until in this what this is doing is it's drawn the fresh water from the tank into the boiler until it reaches the 10 litre capacity but always drain the boiler off which is a 10 litre capacity in the winter especially in the winter as if not this is uncovered under warranty and it can be very expensive to repair the boiler or replace it and to make the bed if you turn this turnbuckle at the back slide your lats out pull them right the way forward like so they will stop on these little lugs here you need to lift this wooden part up slide it forward and drop it into place like so and then you'd use the backrests into the middle and this one I would advise that you turn all of the cushions to the backs as it's far nicer to sleep on it's a flatter surface and you can put fitted sheets and your bedding on there like so. And to operate your windows you just press the buttons in and turn the toggles up. You can then push the window out and it'll stay out. You've got to push it all the way up to bring it back in. And on all windows you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen. But always make sure that your blinds, or, sh or should I say your window is closed when you're traveling as well as all your roof mounted skylights. All your little reading lights are individually switched and these are 12 volt lighting, but these are 240 lighting only, so when hooked up, and this is operated by the, the silver brushed chrome switches so they indicate that it's 12 it's a 240 light like so so to operate the skylight on the vehicle slide this down open it up and then you do have your blackout blind and you have the fly screen the other way as well to operate your toilet you've got a blue button here this flushes the this will pull the water through and flush the bowl. And then to deposit your waste, this is your blade. So you push this to the right, it opens the trap door or the blade and deposits it into the cassette. This must be closed to get the cassette out, otherwise it won't come out the exterior of the van. So if you ever think, oh, why is it not coming out? Make sure this is closed. And then this will go red to indicate that it needs emptying. Your light switch is here and you've got the same skylight as the rear with the blackout blind and fly screen on there on an evening or when you're wanting to let some fresh air in. Pop there, so that water's... So this is what will happen when the boiler has been left open for any length of time. You'd need to bleed it through on the cold first and then slowly go to the hot and it will push the air out the boiler and fill it up until you get a steady flow on the top. Also, you've got your shower, so you always want your shower screens to be tied back by the turnbuckles when you're travelling. And when you're winterising, if you just take your shower head off and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray, as this can catch some water in here and potentially freeze and that's not something you want. So again, 
brush chrome switch indicates that there's two 40 lights at the front of the vehicle, which there is just over there. So that's only when you hooked up that will work, so don't think that'll work if you're wild camping. And then in your kitchen, I've got storage underneath the sink. Your freestanding table lives in here, which is just like an ironing board to put the legs up, which can stand at the back in the lounge or outside if it's a nice day. I've got your cutlery drawer. More storage drawers. And your cupboard in there for your pots and pans and other bits and bobs. You've got your plate rack and some storage. And in there you put your cups and bowl rack. And then you do have three gas burners on the top of the, the hob. The electric one on 240 only is indicated by the red light when it's on. And then you do have your gas rings. Three gas there. So if you've had any hob, hot plate or gas ring on, if you leave it to go cold before you put the lid down, otherwise it may shatter with the heat. And then you've got your grill. So take your grill pan out when you're traveling as this can cause some rattles when on the road. And you've also got your oven. Underneath, if you press this, this is where you will find your hot plate isolation plug for the oven. Just in there. So when you're taking, in, taking the table out the dinette, you've got to loosen these catches so when they're pushed in, they're locked, pull them out, and then you can lift the table off the bar like so. And then you'd fold the leg by pressing this lever in, pulling the leg up until it clicks, and then you place the table Onto the grooves. Like so, to, to form the bed base in the middle, and you'd use your backrests. And this one. into here to form the bed or should I say like this so you get your little infill cushion you turn them upside down and you put the infill cushion in here to fill the space and that's your double bed formed out your di double dinette so in the cupboard above your dinette area is where you'll find your power supply unit so you've got your charger on off You've got all your MCBs and RCD and trip testers, so if anything trips the van out, like your kettle or a toaster, try here before you try your site. And then you've got your main 12 volt fuses, which are all listed. So I'd carry some of them, just in case one fuse does go, you can just replenish the fuse. And you've also got your serial number here, which is your build number of the vehicle. So if you ever need parts, quote this number, and we'll be able to get the parts for this vehicle. And I make a high line bed up in the Luton, pull the board forward and then basically pull the mattress over and then your ladder clips on here to gain access and then you do have lights which you can turn on and off on the switch and you've got windows basically the same as the others with blackout blinds and fly screens and you've got a safety net which clips on here and on the two bars either side to stop anyone rolling out during the night. Now in the cab, so to operate your MS cab blinds on your windows, you can simply pull them back, you can black out this part of the window and the front, and then your blinds, push one up and one down, slide in the middle. You may have to adjust your center mirror, and these are just magnetic, so just clip together like so, so you might need an elastic band or bobble round here, should it be a blustery windy night. And then coming down, you put your handbrake to your right hand side, so it's not in your left hand side like a car to your right. You've got your windows 
electric windows and mirror adjustment which does the top of the mirror and the bottom so you would just turn the joystick round to which mirror you want. You've got your mode which changes your date and time on your display on your speedo. You've got your, and you can go through the mode there and you've got your headlight adjustment. And to turn your ultrasonic sensors off so when you arm the vehicle, so if you wanted to arm it with your salving, it would still arm when you lock it, it will still arm the perimeter, but you've got to disable this, the ultrasonic sensors. And to do so, you put the key in the ignition, turn the ignition on, turn the ignition off, and within six seconds, you press and hold this button. That beeping is just to tell us that we are in, make sure we're in neutral. Once it stops flashing and it can't flash no more, the sonics, ultrasonics have been turned off. You can now lock the vehicle and it will arm the perimeter of the van but not the interior as soon as you put the engine on it will go back to default so you'll have to do this every time sometimes you've got to do this if you need to leave an animal in on the end of here you've got your trip computer so it tells you your instant and average miles per gallon your traveling times and your average speed you've got your lights and your indicators and you've got your cruise control at the bottom. This is a Comfortmatic automatic gearbox. So you've got neutral at the top and then you'd have to use your handbrake as there's no park and this vehicle would still roll in neutral so put the handbrake on. You've got automatic so you can see there one auto. If it's just a solid one it's not an automatic it's a manual and then you would just press up and down to shift the gears. You may have to intervene so if you have to intervene, you'd go to manual and you'd go up or down, or you can leave it in auto and just go up or down for the gears. If it's revving too hard going down a hill or struggling to get up a hill, which I pretty much doubt this will struggle as it's a three liter engine. And then you've got reverse at the back. You've got unlock and lock. So this will lock the habitation door and cab doors on an evening and unlock. You've got your hazards, you've got your fog lights and you've got your heated mirrors. You've got two 12 volt points there and you've got a lockable glove box here and then your radio works so you turn it on Like so, turn on here. And then you've got, it's an FM radio, so you just select your FM channel, save one to six to save them, or you can press SRC here and put a CD in. Or you can pop the head unit out, just like so. Also, above, if you just press this, drop the screen down, turn it towards you, put it into reverse, you'll notice this is your rear view camera. Like so.